Hey everyone, uh, today I'm going to show you how to set up your very first Google Shopping ad. As I mentioned in previous videos, Google Shopping should be one of the first ads that you run for your online store as soon as you launch because it is a very high converting ad that is not very expensive. Okay, and so the actual exact setup uh, for your Google Shopping ads will kind of depend on which shopping cart that you use. And I have videos that I'll show you how to set things up depending on which shopping cart you're on. But running a Google Shopping ad requires the following. You need a Google Merchant account. You need a Merchant data feed from your shopping cart. And you also need a Google AdWords account. Now for instructions on how to set up your product feed from your shopping cart, please refer to the instructional videos posted above depending on which shopping cart you're actually using. But to get started, as I mentioned before, you do need a Google Merchant Center account, which can be signed up for at google.com slash merchants. And what you want to do is you want to set up your account, you want to add your online store URL, verify that the site belongs to you, there's going to be a whole bunch of directions that Google is going to walk you through. You want to enter in all of your store information. Make sure you enter in your tax settings and your shipping methods. I'll show you an example of what this looks like in a little bit. So here is what uh, the Merchant Center looks like once you get in. Uh, mine is already set up since I've been running these for a very long time. But basically you want to go under the Settings tab here. And you want to set everything up. You want to go down and click on each and every one of these things. So I've already verified and claimed my website, but when you first create your Merchant Center account, it's going to ask that you verify and claim your website. And so what does that entail? It's going to ask you to insert a piece of code onto your account just so that Google knows that you, in fact, own that particular online store. So it's going to ask you to insert this code and just follow the directions. And once you do that, your site should be verified and claimed. You want to enter in your business address, your contact details. Um, you also want to go and create an AdWords account. And you guys should have already done this if you were already doing the keyword research for Longtail Pro or Market Semi, which requires an AdWords account. You're going to want to link that to your Merchant Center account so that Google AdWords knows where they're going to be drawing the products from. You, make, you want to make sure that you fill out all of your tax and your shipping methodology for your online store because otherwise your ads aren't going to show if Google does not have this information. And I think those are the only things that I tend to fill out. All these other things are not necessary, so mainly just the general uh, website claiming. Uh, SFTP and FTP only is relevant if you plan on uploading like a spreadsheet of your products as opposed to using your shopping carts automated facilities for, upload, for uploading your products. And again, I highly recommend that you use your shopping cart plugins which makes FTP and SFTP completely unnecessary. Uh, you want to link your AdWords account here and set your tax and shipping methods. I think that's everything that you need. Okay, and once again, of course, you need to set up your shopping cart feed from your shopping cart to let the merchant center know where all of your products and that sort of thing resides. And once again, I'm not going to talk about that in this video because I have very shopping cart specific videos that will teach you how to add your product feed to the merchant center. Just a couple of diagnostic things, you know, as you're following the other video on how to set up your feed, uh, the merchant center will show you whether your feed is good. And in this case here, I've uploaded 470 products everything is green which indicates that my product feed is okay so once again as you are kind of creating your shopping cart feed and uploading it to the merchant center you're going to want to check here to make sure that your product feed looks good okay and so that's pretty much everything related to the merchant center all the shopping carts that I recommend in this class open cart Shopify big commerce they make it so that the uploading of products through the, to the Google Merchant Center is completely automated. The feed is something that the shopping cart generates for you that contains the product name, the description, the cost, the IDs, the links, everything that Google needs to know. Some of the students in my class have opted not to use the plugins for their shopping carts and have opted to create an Excel spreadsheet with all the necessary information. Once again, I don't recommend doing it this way, but you can go on the Google website, follow the directions, and then manually update your feed every 30 days. Okay, once again, as I mentioned before, most shopping carts have a plugin that automatically generates this feed. OpenCart, Shopify, BigCommerce, 
all have automated ways to get the feed to the Google Merchant Center. You just need to activate it. And what's nice about using these plugins is that Google updates their feed requirements regularly. So by using the, the plugin for your shopping cart, it, you'll automatically be kept up to date with all the feed protocols. Okay, and so a couple of best practices for you know some of the images that you use in your feed and on your shopping cart. Make sure you use high quality images. I don't know if you've noticed this, but on Google Shopping, all the images are square, so it behooves you to use square images with your shopping cart. Make sure you fill out everything in the Google Merchant Center, including your tax and shipping info, otherwise your products may not show. And as I mentioned earlier with the demo, um, you should check on the Merchant Center to make sure that your feed is in fact good. Make sure your feed, all the products you've uploaded, is green in the Google Merchant Center. And there's a bunch of common errors with the feed, and in some of the other videos I kind of go through how to debug that, but Google will basically tell you what's wrong and you need to fix it. And finally, once you've got the Merchant Center and your feed set up, it's actually time to go into Google AdWords, set up an AdWords account, and then create your first shopping ad. And that's what I'm kind of going to walk you through in today's video. Okay, so I'm going to bring up my AdWords account here. And what you want to do is you want to click plus new campaign here. And then you want to click on shopping. And I'm just going to name this test shopping campaign. The type is shopping. The merchant identifier, you know, if you've linked everything properly, it should show you the merchant account ID. Okay, and otherwise, if nothing's here, that means you didn't link your AdWords account to your Merchant Center and that you need to go to your Merchant Center and link the two accounts. The country of sale should be your main country of sale. And I always click on I'll manually set up my bids for click. Uh, just set the default at 10 cents because you're going to want to adjust the bid depending on your product category. Budget per day is whatever you're comfortable with. I'm just going to put 10 bucks here and then I'm going to save and continue. Okay, and so I'm going to create my first ad group here, and I'm just going to call this test, test products. Okay, and so by default, Google has, Google already has access to all the products that you uploaded in your feed. Okay, and so by default, Google is just going to list all of your products in your ad group and start bidding 10 cents on every product. Now, it just depends on how many different products that you sell, but for my online store, I tend to bid different amounts depending on the type of product that I'm advertising for. And so if you click on this plus sign here, you'll notice that Google has you know, categorized all of your different products based on your product feed. So in this case, I have apparel and accessories. I have 243 products there. I have 211 home and garden products. And that's uh, 17 arts and entertainment products. And so I can actually go through, depending on the product category, and bid different amounts. Okay, And you can actually bid different amounts depending on a whole bunch of different fields, like brand, ID, condition, product type. So let's say I wanted to bid based on whether I'm selling handkerchiefs or napkins. I could make a bid, separate bid depending on a product type or a custom label. So in this case, in my product feed, I've set aside very custom labels for all of my products. And so here I've separated everything out into handkerchiefs, personalized goods, pillowcases, aprons. And so by adding you know, different products, I can actually create different bids for each product type in my store. So in this case, I'm just going to choose handkerchiefs here. And as you can see here, now this allows me to bid a different amount for just handkerchiefs and a different bid for everything else. Okay, And the nice thing about Google Shopping is there's not a whole lot of controls to it. This is basically the only thing that I can control. The only thing I can control is the bid amount for all the different types of items that I want to sell. Okay, the other There's one more thing that I also wanted to point out with these Google Shopping ads is with these keywords. Now, when you're running a Google Shopping ad, you are not going to be bidding on keywords because Google is going to take care of all that stuff for you. 
However, you do still want to make sure that you enter in your negative keywords properly. So for example, let's say I'm bidding on Google Shopping ads for handkerchiefs, but let's say someone is doing a search for paper handkerchiefs. Clearly, I don't sell paper handkerchiefs, and so I don't want my Google Shopping ads to show up for that keyword. As a result, I need to add paper handkerchiefs as a negative keyword for the campaign. Okay, but more or less, running your first Google Shopping campaign is as easy as what I just showed you. By default, Google will just create ads for you automatically with your default bid. And if you want to get more granular with your bids for each product, that is, this is how you do it. You can separate and put separate bids based on every single field in your product view. Okay, and so that's all there is to it to uh, run a Google product ad. So once again, once you've launched, I would try this first because it tends to convert very well. Okay, that's all I had for this video.